Hey everyone, so today I just wanted to take a look at some more mixes for the Aura and Klingner sketch inks. I think a lot of you are curious how these mix together and I did a couple of mixes when I did the first videos about the inks and I was curious actually to see how some of them mix together. So what I did is I created three kind of swatch charts here. Uh, one with the muted colors plus the vibrant colors. So what I did is, I know this looks really complicated and I did confuse myself a bunch of times. You can see <laughs> putting the wrong color in the wrong square, but essentially what it is is these colors mixed one on one and then more of the Marlene in this one and more of the Frida in this one, etc., etc. So we can just see how these mixes came out. And then I did one with just the vibrant colors together and also one with just the muted colors uh, mixed together. So let's have a look at these in a little more detail. Uh, just to let you know up front, I did not include the black or the gray ink in these mixes, just because uh, I'm not sure how dynamic they would be to change things. I mean, obviously it's the black is gonna make things darker. The Thea is actually an interesting color. It does lean a little bit warm, so that may have been interesting to use, but I kind of wanted to keep it to the eight. And I thought people might be more interested in these mixes rather than the darker ones. So anyway, let's take a look. So let's start with uh, Marlene, Clara, Veroni, and Carmen. So in the middle, diagonally through here, we have the 100% of the color. So this is just the actual color and then mixed with water just to fill in that space. Uh, I kind of did this grid and I know there will be some double ups with it, um, as there always is if you're mixing the same colors together but I just thought it was an interesting way to mix them all together and have a look. So I think some of the most interesting ones out of here are probably the Marlene and Clara, which gives you this beautiful aqua. So that really vibrant sort of tealish green that already leans kind of blue, just looks so pretty with some more blue in there with the Marlene. And then I think the other one, which was really interesting was probably these, so the Clara and Veroni, so this is the sort of, this is the 100% of the Clara, and then the Veroni is this pink. So these two mix together, making this really interesting color, and then adding a little more of the pink in, and you get this really sort of gorgeous muted purple. Uh, so I think they're really interesting, those mixes, and then we get down to these sort of autumnal mixes here, with the Carmen, which is not really, it's a very orange leaning warm yellow. So it's always gonna produce these nice sort of autumnal colors and mixing it with the Vroni here was really nice. You get that nice burnt orange, but then adding a little more of the pink in, you get this sort of more red toned orange, which is really lovely too. So I think they're kind of some exciting mixes. Uh, what I did not do is mix the mixes with each other which I think could actually be interesting too but I was kind of burnt out <laughs> with mixing uh, one drop you know you have to measure out one drop of each so that it's it's kind of even to get those mixes and so by the end of swatching I was kind of like um, yeah I'll just leave this for another day but I do think I actually do want to explore that a little bit like I think this two times Veroni here which is this really super rich royal purple mixed with maybe one of these sort of greens here could make an interesting brown sepia color. So this is just the really sort of bright vibrant colors mixed together. And I will scan these in and I'll put them on my website. I'll put a link below so that you can see these in more detail and take more time. It's kind of, you know, probably laborious for me to go through each one of these when you can sort of seek out the color that you want and then see what the mix is. So I'll definitely post these online. So that's the bright ones. Next, let's take a look at the more muted colors. So we have Frida, Emma, Julie, and Lily. And again, they go in this diagonal here for the 100% of that color, and then a wash back with water, uh, which actually was a really interesting little experiment by itself. I mean, this color is just really interesting when it's diluted a little more. It's quite a heavy color when you use it in its mass tone but watered down a little bit I think that is going to be really interesting to work with. 
Um, the same with the other three. They're all just, I mean, I love Julie. This color is just eggplant pink is just gorgeous. But the interesting thing I think I found out about these mixes is creating some browns and sepias was you, you do get a lot of them, but they're not, they're always a little red leaning. Uh, they decided not to include a brown or sepia in this collection, which is quite interesting. I suspect they want you just to mix your own. It's really quite hard to get those tones. Yeah, so because these colors are already sort of muted off the bat, we just get this beautiful collection of, you know, more subtle colors here. And once you do put them in a fountain pen, like I have them in my preppies, they tend to be a little lighter and a little even more muted. So just something to keep in mind. But yeah, if you're sketching on watercolor paper and sort of diluting these and using them and then doing washes over them, I think these are really beautiful collection just these four sort of mixed together you can get a lot of different sort of earthy shades but yeah I think my favorite mix of the bunch is probably this which is the two Julie plus the one Emma and I think that gives like a really beautiful reddish brown color um, yeah I think that's yeah I was looking at this one too which is the same but just a little more I laid down a little more ink so it's the two two Julie and one Emma uh, yeah, I think that's one of the most interesting ones. And actually this one is beautiful. The Lily plus the Frida. So you get this really deep sort of teal color there, which is really lovely. Uh, but yeah, so I think these are quite interesting too. Again, I'll scan this and put it up on my site. And then the most interesting one, I guess, is the four vibrants mixed with these four muted colors. So with these mixes, you're sort of getting a toned down effect of these vibrant ones. Uh, so when you mix the Frida with the Veroni, you get these beautiful, really sort of rich purpley colors. I think the Frida here is much more dominant. We have two Frida here plus one Veroni, and then even adding another Veroni in here, it doesn't shift a whole great deal, but definitely produces some really beautiful colors. Yeah, and so there was a viewer that asked me how to mix a sepia tone with these colors. And I think probably the closest we're gonna get is with the Emma and uh, Veroni here. I think that is probably, it's a little bit of a green leaning sepia. And I guess above it, if you wanted to do the, um, just the one-on-one, -on -one, this is the two Emma plus the Veroni. That one with the one Emma and one Veroni is a little more of a warm leaning sepia. We do have some more down here. So this is a good candidate, the the Lily mixed with uh, Veroni. So the vibrant pink mixed with this really sort of subdued khaki green color here, khaki brown green. So I think they're probably your best for getting the browner sort of sepia tones. We do have some over here, but they lean more towards the orange, uh, more rusty colors. So, so yeah, really interesting mixes and all gorgeous colors if you're into sort of the muted tones here. You can see how vibrant these are to start off with on the top and then just adding, you know, equal amounts of these uh, muted hues here, just really tone them down and make them much more muted palette. Yeah, so I thought this was interesting. Uh, again, I will put these all up on my site as scans. Uh, there was, I don't think I did a sheet where I didn't make a mistake. <laughs> so I have a couple here that I had to stick over because I don't know, my brain is, just gets confused with the whole um, two drops of whatever and I was putting it in the wrong column. So I started off pretty bad up here and then got better towards the end, but yeah, really fun experiment and it's always good to refresh your color theory. You know what to expect, but it's slightly unexpected what type of hue you're actually going to get out of them. So that was a really fun little experiment. And yeah, I hope you guys get some use out of these. I'll post them and put the link in the description. Uh, I guess if you did find it's helpful, then please click on the like button. That really helps get this video out to other people that might be interested in it. Um, yeah, so thanks again for joining me. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.